Well, folks, they finally did it. Google just achieved verifiable quantum advantage. That means for the first time, a quantum computer has solved a real testable problem faster than any classical supercomputer, and they can actually verify it. So in today's video, let's talk about what exactly did Google just do and why it's such a breakthrough for quantum computing. It's gonna be very fascinating, so let's dive into it. Google has been trying to build a quantum computer for a while now. Back in 2019, Google claimed they achieved quantum supremacy with a chip called Sycamore. It was impressive, but critics argued it couldn't be verified independently. But fast forward to today and their new 105 qubit chip Willow just successfully ran a new algorithm called Quantum Echoes that completely changes the game because this time the output can be checked and validated, which is a key requirement for the word verifiable. So let's talk about Quantum Echoes. What exactly did this algorithm do? The idea behind Quantum Echoes is surprisingly elegant. You take a bunch of qubits, whoa, whoa, let's, let's rewind a bit. Before we get there, we gotta understand what exactly is a qubit. So in classical computing, everything boils down to bits. A bit can be zero or one, we all know that. But a qubit can be in a combination of both states at once. I know, it sounds crazy. It's a property called superposition. You can think of it like flipping a coin. While it's spinning in the air, it's technically both heads and tails at the same time because we haven't measured it yet. But once it lands, or in other words, when we measure it, we get one result or the other. And then there's another property that qubits possess, which is called entanglement. This is where two qubits can become linked so that the state of one instantly affects the other, even if they're far apart. This allows quantum computers to explore multiple possibilities simultaneously, giving them exponential computational power for certain types of problems. So while a classical computer tries every path one by one, a quantum computer can, in a sense, explore many possibilities at once, thanks to superposition and entanglement working together, as long as you keep those qubits stable. And this is super hard because qubits are incredibly fragile. Any heat, vibration, or electromagnetic noise can cause them to lose coherence. It basically causes them to forget their quantum state. That's why Google's quantum chips like Willow operate in near absolute zero temperature, which is colder than outer space. So now that we understand how qubits operate, the quantum echoes algorithm starts to make a lot of sense. Here's how it works. You take an array of qubits and you run a series of quantum operations forward in time. Then you reverse them, kind of like rewinding a movie, and if everything is perfect, the system should technically return to its original state, because you're essentially undoing every step. But here's the twist. Google intentionally added a small disturbance. They flipped, or protruded, as they say, a single qubit in the middle of the process and then ran the system backwards. So what this does now is that that tiny disturbance starts to ripple through the whole system, affecting other qubits in unpredictable ways. And by measuring how much that disturbance, or echo in this case, deviates from the original state, scientists can observe how quantum information spreads and scrambles. It's kind of like dropping a pebble into a perfectly still pond then trying to run time backwards and see if all the ripples cancel out. Spoiler alert, they don't, because in Google's case, they just protruded a single qubit and ruined everything. But that's the point, and that difference tells you a lot about how a quantum system behaves. This process is known as measuring an out-of-time order correlator, or OTOC. But why is this so hard to do? Well, because to run time forwards and backwards perfectly like that, you need every single quantum gate to be incredibly precise. Even a little bit of noise can drift and cause the entire echo to collapse into randomness. And by dramatically improving calibration, timing control, and gate fidelity, Google's Willow chip was able to reduce this issue completely. And when they finally ran that experiment, 
Willow completed the task around 1300 times faster than the world's best classical simulation. But here's another question, how do we know that it actually worked? Well, that's where the verifiable part comes in. One of the main criticisms of earlier quantum supremacy claims was that no one could independently check them. The computations were too complex for any classical computer to simulate, so we just had to take the researcher's word for it. But with quantum echoes, the experiment is designed to be verifiable. And here's why. For smaller numbers of qubits, classical supercomputers can still simulate the same quantum circuit. So scientists ran both the quantum version on Willow and the classical version on a powerful supercomputer and compared the results. When both matched perfectly, that confirmed the method was indeed correct. And once verified on smaller scales, they scaled it up to a full 105 qubit circuit that classical computers simply can't handle anymore. And this approach also makes this algorithm transferable, because quantum echoes isn't tied to Google's hardware. It's a mathematical procedure, not a proprietary chip operation. It can, in principle, run on any quantum computer that supports similar gate operations. And that's a big deal. This means that verifiable quantum advantage has finally been achieved. So what does this actually mean for computer science and software development? Well, it means that quantum hardware is finally consistent enough to run an algorithm that can be checked, benchmarked, and trusted, which is exactly what you need before it can be part of any software development. Think of how GPUs started. In the beginning, they were just used for graphics, and then developers realized you could use them to accelerate all kinds of computations, from deep learning to simulations. Quantum computers are heading down a very similar path. So here's what the future looks like. At first, only physicists will be able to use them directly, but eventually we'll have higher level tools and maybe even SDKs where developers can call quantum routines the same way they use a math or machine learning library today. Imagine a world where you can import a quantum module and run a simple Python script. Behind the scenes, that function would offload part of the computation to a quantum processor, probably sitting in a cryogenic data center somewhere, and return the result to your regular Python program. That might sound futuristic now, but experiments like this are laying the foundation for exactly that kind of hybrid computing model. In the near future, quantum acceleration could help with things like compiler optimization, machine learning, or molecular and material simulation. Google calls this milestone number two on their roadmap. The next step is building a long-lived logical qubit with full error correction. Once that is achieved, quantum hardware will be reliable enough for everyday software systems to depend on it. I truly believe that quantum future isn't decades away anymore. It's here and it's now verified and soon it will kickstart the next generation of computing. And by the way, folks, I'd love to know your thoughts. How do you see quantum tech changing the world? Whether it's faster AI, smarter compilers, or something completely unexpected. Drop your ideas in the comments. And folks, if you like these types of technical breakdowns, be sure to subscribe to our channel. This has been Andres from Better Stack, and I will see you in the next videos.